Um, and at this point, you've probably done some manual runs while you're getting this set up. Um, but obviously, we need to get this, this orchestrated and scheduled. So going into your data form repo, click over to releases and scheduling. If you haven't done this yet, you'll get this landing page. Um, they're going to ask you if you want to create a production release or a custom release. We're going to go with a production release, even if this is dev data for you. Um, we're going to think about uh, production as being more of a, a state of mind than anything. <laughs> um, and you'll see that it's automatically given us the ID or name of production, which I usually keep the same. Um, and you can see that it's pointing to our main branch and we have a frequency that gets run. Um, this is not the frequency of actually executing and running this model. When we work in data form with scheduling, we have two concepts we have to think about. We have a release and we have a schedule. A release is a software release. It's a snapshot of your application, come, in our case, coming in from GitHub. You might have been thinking the other day about this. You know, If I make a change for my client and I push it into my GitHub repo, how long does it take to actually update the corresponding data form repo in your project? The answer is you need to tell it. You need to specify how, how often that happens. I'll be honest with you, I go hourly usually. Um, this isn't something that costs anyone any money, to my knowledge, in GCP or GitHub. This is literally just going out to GitHub and saying, hey, give me the newest copy of the model code that we've been working with, right? Um, hourly sometimes does not cut it. I've been working with clients, and we have hair on fire emergencies. You'll make a change, you'll push it to the GitHub repo, and you can come in here and actually click a refresh button and get it to force an update. I've done that more often than I'd like to admit. but um, in the case of normal, peaceful software development, hourly should do the trick. What that means is anytime you push something to your main branch, it is now entering a production state, and hourly, our data form repo will load that code in. So I'm actually going to run it until we schedule it to run. This is just creating a release of your software. The other part of it, besides just pulling in updated versions of the code, is these things called compilation overrides. Um, you'll see things you'll, you'll recognize, like the Google Cloud Project ID, some suffixes and prefixes, and you can actually even add variables down here. These are those variables that we set in our data form configuration file. You know, the part where you set things like your GA4 data set, the output project, things like that, um, those can be overrode in this uh, compilation configuration. We're not going to do it today. Um, we're configuring things directly in our code, and that's how we want them to be. And you know what? I don't say it wouldn't be uncommon for that to be the case. You know, you'll create different projects for different clients, different project one, you know, pointing to uh, different things. Um, but the the idea of this is that um, if you needed to dynamically change how your repo runs when it compiles into a software release here, you could do this. The most common one is a development versus a production environment. The best practice is that your default configuration is dev. You want to make sure that if somebody installs your repo and runs it, they're not overriding your production data. They're just working within your dev environment, whatever that is. We would then, in our configuration here, override those variables to point to production when we want to. It's sort of a safety feature, right? By default, you point to dev. And within our compilation here, we say, nope, I want you to point to the production project, and I want you to you know, update the GA4 data set to the one that's the, the actual number we want. We don't really need to do this today because we're just going to be using our code as is. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, at this point, we're going to leave it as is. So let's go ahead and create this release, and you'll see that we have a uh, production release on the on the main branch, and it's um, scheduled at zero past every hour and has not run yet. Um, we can actually uh, go in and pause and delete it. Um, if you come in here, uh, like I said, you can go in and click this new compilation button, and it will force an update. So if you're ever in hair on fire mode, um, you can go out and run that. Um, you can actually. Uh, manually execute this to do a run. And I will usually do that just as a, you know, just to make sure things are running okay in the, in the release configuration. 
we didn't change anything in this, right? So it's going to be fine. Um, we're going to run all actions. And you know what? For fun, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do a full refresh on this data. Um, once you create this release configuration, this is just a snapshot of the code. You actually need to create a workflow to actually run it. Um, this is a graphical interface on top of uh, workflows, which is a GCP service, right? Um, it is a little bit different, a little bit separate. Um, but what we would do is come in here and we would create something like, we'll call it daily. Um, we wanna run this on our production configuration. You can pick the service account you wanna run it as. We're just gonna um, go with our default for, um, one here. And then we need to put in a frequency. Um, I usually use a tool like CronTab here to determine uh, these because I still haven't memorized these. So for instance, if we wanted to run it at 10.05 in the morning, right, um, we could use this code here. Um, so I'm going to paste that in. But if you're not familiar with cron stuff, come to a site like this. They usually have a randomizer like this that'll kind of give you a tour of um, all the different ways you can describe date ranges and frequencies. Um, so at this point, we have um, daily is the name of this workflow configuration. It's gonna run our pr production release. It's gonna run as the default service account and it's gonna run at 10.05 in the morning. Um, you need to um, change it to the time zone that you want that to reflect. So um, I usually pick something like Eastern Daylight from, for, for my clients, right? Um, and then you need to decide what is going to run. Um, this is part of your scheduling strategy is tagging and categorizing the models in your data set. Um, I am a fan of putting as many tags as possible in my models to describe not only the type of data they are, but the frequency that they should be run, and even the KPIs and OKRs and things that they associate with. Um, our data, if you look at the model that we've created for you, is generally tagged with just something like daily or weekly. Um, what that allows us to do is to run a subset of the model without having to reprocess the whole thing. In reality, for me, that usually translates to things I run every day and things I run every week. So there's like incremental uh, processing of events and sessions. That kind of stuff happens all every day. Um, and then there's things like Monday morning, we will do a reprocessing of user data from the previous week. Um, so for instance, if we wanted to come in here, we could create one and use, you can see it's automatically pulling in on the daily tag that we have in there. You can say, you know what, every day I want you to run every model in this repo that is tagged with this daily tag. Um, that's something that you add to the SQLX file. Um, for our sake today, I'm just gonna have it run all, on the all actions. Um, but you can see down here, um, you can create additional workflow configurations, right? Um, if you wanted to create one that points to daily, one that does every model weekly, and then maybe you need to do a monthly full refresh of the data, right? Maybe that's something you may take in here as well. 